pressing the wrong button. There we go. I'm all, I'm all of a dither I am. Wait a minute. There we go. We got it up. There you go, Brian. G'day. Ah, uh, Wombat, g'day. I've said that. Holy cow, my first... Well, you nearly were, but I think Wombat beats your bet that much. Do we have sound? Is everything good? Oh, dear. G'day, Chad. Good evening to you, too. Oh, Lucas, hi. How are you? Yeah, Bob... Bob, he's still up in the house. He's wondering what's going on. He's, oh, what's, all, what's all the excitement about? Oh, by the way, give me a chocolate biscuit. Oh, OK, I'll go back and have a nap now. So there you go. But he'll be down soon, I no doubt. And Susie must like pop in and say hi. G'day, Louise. Welcome aboard. Frustrating, isn't it? You're three and a half minutes that way and we can't see each other. There you go. G'day, Ray. How are you, mate? G'day, Doug. Oh, this sounds good. All right. We had a bit of an issue because I didn't turn the um, receiver off on the camera last night. So even though I put new batteries in, they, uh, they, they went flat. But we're all good. We're good to go. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm getting some benefit out of this. I'm actually tied in my workshop each night. Have a look. Look, all clean, sorted. Bench is tidy. Just... No, go away. Press the wrong button. Just for Ray, look at that. Look, look, Ray, floor's tidy. There you go. I won't show you the saw bench just yet because it's got muck on it. But I bought my drum sander in. That's over there. We'll be using that in a tick. There's a pot that we mixed up yesterday with all the smelly stuff in it. And there's my breakfast that you most likely don't want to see. But I'm going to eat it anyway. So what are we going to do today? What I didn't do yesterday, oh, I tell you, oh, <laughs> I was tired. I went up. I don't know what time did I finish, Ray? About two o'clock? Half past one, two o'clock? And I went up to Susie. I said, oh, darling, I'm just going to have a little lie down and watch a bit of Netflix. She said, yeah, right, eh? I woke up at half past five. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. So I'm going to have to pace myself. Pace myself. We didn't glue this one together, which we'll do uh, very, very soon. Got the chopping board. We've got to clean that veneer up and where is it? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. There's a chopping board down there. We've got to clean that up and put another strip of veneer in there to finish it off. I've got to get a wiggle on with these boxes. I found another one that I've got to clean, so I'll clean that one because it's got cocky poo all over it. There we go. Yeah, not too bad. Not as bad as the other ones, but still not good. So we'll clean those up. Um, we'll make a frame. Susie's doing another positive set. Set. <laughs> positive saying on our embroidery machine today. So we'll frame this one and we'll make a frame out of that using hand tools. Oh, I finished gluing up all these yesterday. Oh. So I've got to veneer them. They're going to go through the drum sander very, very soon. I've got some gear here to do that pressure pot. If we've got enough time, we'll do some of that. Um, who else is snuck in? Bonnie, g'day. Better, <laughs> you didn't see it yesterday, Bonnie. It was a mess. Where's Bob, MC? Oh, welcome anyway. I don't recognise you. You were first timer in, in the chat room. Welcome to Woodworking Masterclass. MC, g'day, mate. How are you? Where's Bob? He's up in the house. The kids are still having breakfast, so he'll be up there bludgeoning off of them. Um... Yeah, uh, for, for those that are new that aren't in the chat room yet or just having a lurk on the outside, this, I'm Steve Hay and this is Woodworking Masterclass, but I'm on lockdown for 14 days, this is day four, but we're really considering just, we're going to make this every, I'm going to get all emotionally, hang on, <coughs> check myself, whoa, we're going to make this every day for as long as this lasts or as long as I can do it. The feedback and comments I've been getting from people around the world have humbled, oh, I'm getting teary, humbled Sue and I to a degree you wouldn't believe that in our little workshop, we're just having fun doing a bit of woodwork, saying day to people, and yet there are people who are actually making a difference in their lives. As small as it may be, uh, I think if we can do some good, and we're starting to build a really great chat community in there that seems supportive to each other, they're having fun. They're pulling the stuff out of me every day. That's a bear, it's bearing in mind. Look, stop doing that. Bearing in mind, look, see, 
Wrong one. Hit the right one, dopey. There you go. Look, <laughs> it was real. Those of you that missed that, you should see the router kickback I had yesterday. I had a nail go through my finger. Um, but yeah, getting back to the serious side, if we can just give someone a little bit of routine or predictability um, and help them through, we're all going through at the moment, it's worth it. So we're going to be here every day to annoy you, to allow you to annoy me. <laughs> and we're getting some woodworking done. So if you've, as I said, if you've got any questions, if you've got any queries about woodwork, if you've made something, share it with everybody and uh, we'll see this thing through together. Okay, enough of that rubbish. Let's get back to me being stupid. Um, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna have me breakfast. First off, I think we'll put these through the drum set. Oh, that was the other adjunct I was going to say. It is woodworking masterclass, but on these streams, basically it's in the workshop with Steve because what you see me do, this is real work that I have to do for real jobs to get it out. So instead of me doing a stream on a specific purpose for, um, for one of a better word for entertaining people in the stream, you actually are watching me working on real jobs in real time in a real workshop. So, and if you've got any queries, questions, you got suggestions of me doing it a better way, like not putting nails in things I'm routing, happy to oblige. All right, let's get on with it. Yeah, all right, I will. Brian's told me to eat me breakfast, so you're going to have to put up with slapping noises. <laughs> mm. Oh, I don't say, hurry back. I'm just going to have me breakfast. You won't miss anything because there's nothing turning. <laughs> I'm, I'm spitting cereal at you now. Mm. Well, I'm eating that. I'll see if I can work out how I can set this drum sander up. And... Uh, we will go from there. So, jet, whatever it is, 1632, and it's got a, a clutch table drive on it, which means if it's pushing too hard or it gets to a point where it won't go, it won't stall the machine, it slows the belt drive down. Brilliant bit of kit. Mm. I'm hoping that the... Um, I should have another thingamajiggle around here somewhere. I'm hoping the dust extractor tube, ow, from um, the bandsaw will go on. Okay, I'm just looking for an adapter, which I know I've got, oh, there you go. I know I've got around here. So I'm just stealing it off another dust extractor I've got. out here in the machinery part of the workshop. So we should be good to go now. There we go. There you go, look at that. This is gonna reach, I'm gonna be a happy man. Well, even if it doesn't reach, I'm still gonna be happy. It's happy, it's happiness to, does not depend on my dust extractor. Okay. I don't know if you're getting any of this. Uh, look at that. Whoa! It's a bit top heavy. Um, let me turn this around here. Ah, that should do it. Look at that. Okay, let's see if I can get a good posse so you can watch all the, the fun and excitement as I jam my fingers in there. Okay, all right, that's good. Okay, I'll be away from the chat room for a little bit, but I'll be over there so you can talk behind me backs. These, um, ah, these are actually, is that going in there? Yeah, they're hearts to go inside some boxes I have to make. And so I'm hoping, it would really help if I plugged it in. It? So, the good thing about this bandsaw, it's got, it's got a plug, a spare plug in the back of the 
bandsaw that I can use. There you go, look at that. Ba -ba -bum. Oh. Wait a minute, I've got a game. I just, just got to take this. Hey Joe, how are you? I am well. You're live around the world on the stream. Be famous. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. How long? Oh, okay. So well, I can, um, 90 mil, I can do 100, and I could do 70. So 90, yeah, 90 would be all right. We can do that. Okay, so do you give me a two-part figure that will clean it and then no longer last? Yeah, I'll do that. Um, how, many, how many pieces and how, how long? Yeah, okay, well, if I did that, I'm just thinking which lathe I have to use, that's all. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Oh, do you know how to use a lathe? You can do it. You can just come and use my lathe if you like. No, I don't. I'm using a lathe. Oh, all right. Well, I'll give you a crash course. Okay. <laughs> we'll do it. All right, Joe. I'll give you a buzz in a couple of hours. Cheers. No worries. Bye. There you are. There you go. See, I told you in my workshop live that was a turning job that's just come in that I'm going to have to do. We might even video that. Why not? Why not indeed? Uh, g'day, Alan. I saw that. I saw that. Have a look at that beautiful box. That, oh, hang on. Where's the box? That, oh, that Kath did the embroidery up. Mate, that is awesome. Look at that. What's another one? Oh, it's Nine Man's Morris, is it? Those tags. Spoons are coming along well too. They, that's awesome. Good stuff. Yeah, no, that's terrific. Thanks for sharing, Alan. Uh, no, they're not coming to visit me, Ray. They're going to pick the timber up. Either the timber I've got here or they leave the timber at the front gate. She told me what she wants to do. I've just got to turn it and then I'll just give it back to her. And then you didn't hear that conversation. She said, yeah, when this is all finished, I'd love to come around for a lesson. So, cleared that one up. But thanks for keeping me honest, Ray. Uh, <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, no, it's all good. And and just an update on my son. I was talking to him this morning. He's starting to feel a lot better. He's still on antibiotics. And, yep, that's it. We are still good. All right. Um, let's go over and do these. This is going to be boring to watch. But what can I tell you? Um, actually, if I go... Oh, here comes Bob. Hey, mate. He could hear me cereal bowl. You can't get on to. You want to come here? Come here. Come on. You come up here. Come on. Up you come. You come up and say hi. You gonna say hello? The, 
Nothing to eat there, is there, mate? Mwah. Go on. I'll finish my cereal in a minute and you can lick the bowl. Um, let me see if I go here. What do you get? Well, there you get. You get the long shot. And I'll see if I can get a... Maybe... You see that? Can you see that coming out the other side? There you go. You can see me actually working. <laughs> yes, Bob. It's all good. Don't worry. All right. There we go. You're a good lad, but I wish you'd learn to shut the door behind you. Oh, I'll show you that um, DOX blonde we mixed yesterday. I had to dilute it quite significantly to get it where I wanted it. If I'm standing there, am I in the road the whole time? I don't know. We'll see. Let's go. Let's rock and roll. Trick with the drum sander is if you put it on an angle, not at 90 degrees. That gives you a nice pattern across this way. And then you change it and you go to the other diagonal, which gives you a crosshatch pattern. Like that. That's really great for veneering, but I've got to keep going until all these glue marks have gone. When I adjust this one, I go a quarter of a turn, and I find that's um, adequate. If you don't get this dead flat, 
when you put the veneer on, it's going to show through. One more, I reckon I should do it on that side. Then I'll have a chat. Okay. I'll come over the yarn and I'll do the other side. Ah! While I'm having the yarn, we can cut the top off of this box or clean these veneers up and we'll get stuff done. Oh! Da, 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 bum. Now, where do we get up to? Lewis, yeah, he's got a couple of fat lumps on him. He does. He's got me trained well. Um, that was who asked me about that with Lewis. Yes. Yeah, he's good, though. They're not causing him any discomfort, so he's happy. Mm hmm. Oh, I'll tell you what, I've got a, speaking of glue, I'll better put my glue pod on <coughs> so we can glue those up. Hey, Ewan, how are you? Well, you just bring it, you just bring it into the workshop, Ewan, and we'll help you. There you go. We'll, we'll try online classes. No, I don't, I don't think I'll be using, well, not on that job I won't be using the router. I'll be using the spindle sander over there shortly. No, I won't. I'll be veneering. There you go. <laughs> don't, you and don't. You'll have sleepless nights. All right, I'm going to cut this up and then we can glue this one. This is Amboynia. Um, I'll leave that camera over there. So let me see if I can spin this one around. Uh, you can get a view from this side. There you go. Let me break he's right in the middle of it. I'm just cleaning these off. And this is a seven-sided box. And I did it because I can. <laughs> There's no other reason for it. And it's really funny because when you look at it, your mind goes, oh, that's six-sided. And then it goes, 
Oh, hang on, no, it's too big to be six-sided. And it won't think it's seven-sided. What I'll have to do before I glue it up is when you're cutting this stuff, don't try and do it in one go because you're going to get chips. So if it takes 17 strokes of the knife, it'll take 17 strokes of the knife. And try not to do what I did then, but I was lucky, I think. Um, oh. and then I'll grab a bit of timber and we might start making a picture frame with hand tools. we do some moulding and all that sort of stuff. Okay. The inside of the box is going to be in Boinia too. Those of you that watched yesterday when I mixed up some D-Wax Blonde, I really had to go to a bigger jar, so that was something I learnt. Uh, if you're using flakes, there are far less flakes when you put it in the jar than if you use granulated, granulated, because I granulated this, and boy, it gelled up quickly. Um, I'll show you the other stuff later. I can find a stick. <laughs> Give it a bit of a give it a bit of a stir. Actually, I'll come over here. Is that gonna break? Oh no, that'll be fine. This is a big solution that we did yesterday for it's ten litres, there's eight litres in there at the moment. Um, I'm turning it into ebonizing solution. So basically it's steel wool in vinegar and it's got a ways to go. What I might do tonight is take that out and just leave it out in atmosphere and you'll find that it'll start to rust a lot better. That being, okay, I've got a leak here. Oh, wow, don't like that. Oh! Okay. We'll see how that goes. I've just... There's a leak up under this. Luckily, I didn't put 10 litres in there. But I've stirred it with this bit of blackwood and we'll just put that to one side and in an hour or so, we'll have a look, even though that's only been sitting in that vinegar for what, um, a day, it might already start to have the reaction that we want, but I'll leave it in there for a lot longer. Oh, I'm not going to touch that now. I'll have to get another bucket, I think. Oh. Where's me? My brush box and I'll take one of these. What I'm going to do with these bits of you here, I will um, sand them down and then we'll put a bit of de-wax blonde on it with, 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 with with a mop, I think. Yep, that'll do. Squirrel hair mop. So basically the inside's got to be finished, then I can glue it all up. And then I don't have to worry about the inside. Lovely. Oh. What have we got? <laughs> well, if you were there yesterday, Stephen, you, you missed. 
missed me having a kick back on the router. But today we're not doing that much at the moment. We're just sanding back some hearts. I'm just about to sand these back, then we'll cut up the chopping board, put some more veneer in that, and we can start making a picture frame for the saying that Susie came up with the other day, and she's making another one today. So think outside the box. Different situations call for different thinking. Oh, that's the point. I've got a hot glue gun down here, I might do that. Okie dokie, let me go. We'll go for, this is very, very soft. Actually, I think, I'll, oh, that is 180. Okay, I'll go 180. And we'll see what it looks like. It almost looks like a suede when it's been sanded. Wax some on and see what it looks like. That comes up alright. Move the keyboard out of the way. <clears throat> I'll have um, leather on the bottom, I think. I'll let that dry for a couple of minutes. <clears throat> where, 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 where's the jar? That's what i will just leave this in here. So the beauty I love about shellac is it just, I don't know, it's so easy to clean. And even if you're slack, like I have been in the past, and you forget to clean your brush out, just soak it in some matho or DAA for a bit, and then it softens up. And this, this brush here's got to be... Oh, 94, 2004, 2014... It's 26, 27 years old, and... Uh, 
it's still in good nick. Uh, I'll go and do some more sanding in a bit. How are you? Welcome to the workshop. Mm. <laughs> all right, Ewan, all the best, mate. And um, if your furniture course is, is cancelled, just go and practice. Doesn't matter. You don't need someone to show you how to do something. Just experiment. Find out for yourself. Mm. Oh, yeah, no, they're not nice on by the source. <laughs> I got a shock on one of those the other day too. Luckily the camera wasn't on. Me doing something I shouldn't have been doing. Should know better, but I don't. G'day Ken, you finally got us live. Good to see you. Well, we're gonna be live every day for a while yet, so hopefully you can catch us again and, and enjoy your stay. How old are you? If you don't mind me asking, I don't mind you asking him, I'm 65. In my mind, I'm uh, about 32, and when I wake up in the morning, I feel like 109. And when, when I finish doing the stream, I feel like I'm 80 something. But I enjoy doing it, so there you go. G'day, Tango. How are you, mate? Oh, that's good, Randy. Lovely to have you back. All right. Um, I might go over and throw these other things through. That sand, I'm not going to finish this before I get too much more, <laughs> too much more sawdust in it. Mm. Okay, we'll go over that machine, finish doing that. Come back, give these, <coughs> give these another coat. Pull the chopping board a bit, see how we go there. Cut that, glue that up, and then we start making the picture frame. There you go. It's a plan. It's a plan. And if I say I'm going to do things today and I don't, it's because I forgot, but I'll do them tomorrow, so it's okay. Or, or you can remind me. Oh, well, this is going to be no machines, Stephen. So we're going to do all this picture frame by hand. Although I will tell you a story. <laughs> about how I hurt myself once doing it with hand tools. All right, let's go over to um, num, 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 that one there, is it? <coughs> there we go.
And with these, I'm using 40 grit. And with that, that has the same effect as using a toothing plane when it comes to putting the veneer on. See how that's starting to stall? It's because it's taken too much off, but the belt slows down to compensate so it doesn't stall the machine. And you've noticed maybe that I've done three or four passes and I haven't touched this. You can put it through about six times. On the one setting and it will still sand because you've got compression in the sanding table. Okay. Tis done. Look at that. Awesome job. Oh. Yeah, so I, I don't know if you got that, but you don't have to adjust the belt every time. You can put it through several times at the same setting because um, there's compression in the table and also there must be a bit of give in the sanding belt. And as it's going through, um, it pushes it down to the table. So when you put it through the next time, it doesn't push it into the table as far. So you still get a good sand. And in fact, if I can, I'll show you the grit that I was using. If it's going to open. Oh. Whoops. There you go. She, she's pretty aggressive. You wouldn't want to get your fingers caught in there. So that's that one done. Although I'm sort of half thinking I might... No, I might leave that camera there because, oh, depending on how this looks, I might skim it through the um, sander as well. Don't you know. Okay. Do some work on them in a minute. Okay, they're all ready to rock and roll. Let's take this one out. Yeah, I did get a bit of slip there. It's a pity. Doesn't matter, we'll live. I think it was Brian you suggested I make a called up for the next time I do this. Good idea, I think. Good day, Panda! Hello, Bob. Hello, Sue. Hello. They were all asking about you. I didn't tell them you were still in bed. I did. I did. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, hello. Anthony's come. Everyone's down in there. Yeah. 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 I was going to say something between two roses, but anyway. <laughs> do, you, do you reckon we're feeding him too much? Can you remember when I first started streaming, he was about this tall? There you go. You've grown somewhat, young fella. It's good living. That's what it is. Yeah. That's it. Hang on, let me just get a bit of space here. Yeah. And then we can have a look. What you're saying for today is we're going to make a frame for one of them today. Who's saying? Who's saying hi? Well, oh, there you go. Hey, Brian. Uh, Ken. Panda. Panda. You're in Brian. <laughs> oh. There you go. Okay, what is it? Show us. Where's the camera? Well, you can use okay. this one. Oh, yeah, this one here. Be original, not ordinary. Yeah, I like that. Oh, I like that. G'day, Derek. How are you? Hi, Mike. 
Well, as soon as you get your mortise and pestle. Oh, you big mouth! She had no idea. It's just, you, you know, um, darling, I'm, I borrowed your mortise and pestle. I'll bring it back up later. <laughs> yeah, Thanks and doubles at me. Um, and Mark said hello, Anthony. Hello. Mark's in Bundy. Ah, there you go. There you go. Uh, yeah. All right, I'm going back to work my fingers to the bone again. Oh. Machine. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, yeah. no, you keep, keep talking. Oh, I just, okay. I just, I just realised something. Oh, what? Yeah. Just don't worry about it. Just. No, it's not a worry at all if I don't garrot myself over there. Yeah, I tell you what, you're not bad. I tell you to keep talking. There's not a peep out here. Yeah, well, I want peace and quiet. You, you won't shut up. Nobody can hear me unless they can hear me. Oh, I didn't think of that. Wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. I don't know if I can, but I want to. If, if this comes over and hits me on the head, I'll be dead, all right? There you go. All right, I got it. I got it. Now, now, what did you say, darling? You're going you're gonna to work your fingers to the bone. All right? Yes, I said I was going to work my fingers to the bone on the embroidery machine. Yes, I really do. Oh, dear. We work so hard. There you go. <laughs> Okay, I might not be streaming tomorrow, but if you'd like to contact the local hospital intensive oh, care I unit, I could be. Home. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, dear. If All right. It's not that. Other than that, down, I'll take the mic. <laughs> what, darling? Oh, you took the grinder down. Thank you. That's good. All right, no worries. Catch your kids later. Uh, how's Jono going? Yeah. I'm taking a sloth with you. You take a sloth with you. And, and, and your embroidery. Well, no, no, that's all right. No, well, all right. We might um, put that in epoxy. Be kill. Good, good. Oh, dear, dear. <laughs> oh, she's gone now. I'm safe. Mate, that, that would be, that'd be the worst, wouldn't it? You live there and you're out of it. Oh, dear. All right. Now, let's see how we're looking with this one. Um, all right, we'll knock off some of these daggy bits. Oh, I might put it in a vice and just knock them off. I've <coughs> gone awful quiet all of a sudden, isn't it? Oh. There we go. Ah. And the other edge. Yeah, let me go. There you go. Oh, we might go that one. Uh, I used to machine these down each time, but then I thought, well, that's silly, really, because providing I can get a flat-ish surface to work with, I've got more meat there, so when I do finally um, machine it all down, it's going to give me a little bit more on the surface than I would... 
if I machined it down all the time. There we go. Ah, oh, where are we going? Oh, yeah, that was a, a debacker. De, debacker, I think it was. Tagger. That was asking about the mallet. Yeah, there you go, MC. I, I'm not that. I'm not that forgetful yet. No, um, not spraying water on the vice at the moment, Brian, because this is all uneven here and it's all uneven here, so it really doesn't make much difference. Once I get a dead flat surface, yeah, for sure, I will. But when it's like this, it really doesn't have that much of an effect. And it's starting to get, you know, bows and cups and what have you in it. Let me just take this off. We'll bump these up. Here we go. I don't want to go right to the end with this though, because I don't want to split it out. So I might go and get that other, other camera so you can see. Oh, papa dee boo dum boom. The advantage of having a pair and chisel you can go long distances, whereas if I was using this, I could only go to here and the other way, and then this would be hard. But this is a Harold and Saxon parting tool. It's ground slightly differently too. It's ground at 22 and a half degrees, whereas my cabinet chisels have done it 30 degrees. And you'll notice it's got a bit of flex in the blade, which allows you to do exactly what it was designed to, which is what I'm doing now. See, they're fine lines. Okay. Better off coming in this this way to take this end off, then you don't get breakout. So I reckon we might just stick this through the sander. I mean, it's an experimental one, and then we can get an idea of what it's going to look like anyway. So I won't clean the other side off. We'll use this as the base. There you go. Okay. 
Okay, so we'll put that in the sander and we'll sand this rough edge off here just so we can get a bit of colour coming through and uh, give us a bit of a, an indication of how it's going to look. We'll get this extra glue off. It's not going to clog my belt. So I'm not doing this to take the veneer off. I'm just really getting any really heavy bits of glue off. This obviously was the underside when I glued it up and I didn't wipe all that extra glue off. Okay, so we'll go over and give it a spin. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, I figured it was vice, <laughs> Brian. Uh, what about your table clamp you use playing the other cut? Oh yeah, no, that, that'll work, but these dogs are just as good for what I did then. That'll work too. What? Well, this is scary. <laughs> it's the sort of thing you'd find in, a, in an operating theatre, I reckon. Mm. Okay, let's go. Mm. We'll go over to this one, I think. Now we might do that one and then I can go over there. I am there and we'll take this one over. So you can see it coming out. <laughs> no, not quite. That's looking better. All right. Let's give Bob some brekkie. There you go. Mm. Good boy. And turn the dusty on. Helps if you go the right way. Sand that wasn't on then, that was just the belt, so I got the right height. Sand is now on. That's taken the veneer off the top at the moment. You're much better off to her on the side of caution than rip straight in.
goes. <clears throat> Starting to bite. And it'll just about do it, I think, gives us an idea of what it's going to look like. <laughs> and obviously, when, um, when it's all, I'll look at the right one. When it's all smooth, all these other lines will be out of it. But we'll have a look, see what it looks like with a little bit of wet stuff on it. Where do I put? Where do where, 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 where? I'm look. I'm looking for Bob. Where did you put the metho? Where did you put the metho? You don't know it. Oh, here it is. Down here. So, yeah, we'll just. Put a little bit of metho on there to get an idea of what she'll look like when it's finished. And when you consider all those sandy marks won't be there, that's going to look all right. And then what we'll do is right now we'll cut lines along where are we? we'll cut three lines jagged along here and then re-glue it up and I think we're going to have a pretty unique looking chopping board before I do that I'll give these another coat put these away <laughs> well, there you go. That stick I stirred with you uh, a minute ago. It's already starting to go black. So we're, we're on the right track there. I'm going to give these another coat now. Nothing there, Bob. 
There's nothing there. You ate it all. Indeed. So the beauty of doing this is you've got so many different jobs you can work on at the same time. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit. And then before you know it, you've got a lot of jobs you didn't think you were going to finish, finished. Okay. Um, where I'm, I'm trying to catch up to where I was. Oh, okay. Oh, you went away. I thought you were quiet. I <laughs> but it's all right, Ray. I didn't make any mistakes. Not that I'm aware of. I'm still... <laughs> I'm still reading Ray's e expedition to the IGA. Tell you what, IGA's are a good little shop, I reckon. They, um, they carry most things and they're pretty competitive to uh, mainstream supermarkets as well. How thick do you, how do we get from toilet paper to veneer? <laughs> I'm pleased we're back onto it. Uh, thanks, Tango. Yeah, I, I think it's going to come up okay. How thick did you say the veneer is? 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.7. The ebony veneer I've got is 0. 0.5 of a mil, um, but most of the other stuff between, let's say 0. 0.7 is an average. Or 0. 0.6 as Randy says, yeah. Well, that's good, Ken. I, I agree with you. The only thing, I've just got to cancel that um, comment because you mentioned the CV. And if you do, um, YouTube, take the chat out so other people can't see the chat. I've since learned, so please don't feel as if I'm discriminated against you. I'm not, but if we're going to stick with woodwork, let's stick with woodwork. You have a good night and I hope to catch you tomorrow. Oh, where are we up to? Are those size two? Yes, they are, Tango. I'll give them another coat whilst I'm here. Actually, I'm going to use a slightly thicker solution this time. Well, we're going to put that together because not many people have seen seven-sided boxes. Oh, hang on. No, I think this one. That's the one I used before. I'm going to use which? this one. This one's slightly thicker. And the good thing about when you're using shellac, see how quickly I can coat in between. You don't have to wait a huge amount of time. It's you know, only a matter of a few seconds or a minute or something like that. And we're good to go again. But the other side of the coin is there are many, 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 many coats to go on.
Okay. Clean that and do that. Yeah, no, we, 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 we know how to fix things, David, because we've made many mistakes. Let's sound like the royal we, but I mean everybody in the chat room. I personally have made more mistakes than I care to remember, and I'm still doing it. But you learn. Uh, wombat. Uh, is, yeah, I live in a, um, an estate. We're not a gated estate, but there is only one road in and they have been talking about putting gates on there. That's it, just to protect our coal supermarket and our IGA. Hi, Demon. How are you, mate? All right, so we'll let that sit for a little bit. Welcome to the workshop. Uh, what did I say I was going to do? Oh, we'll cut this up. Go with the bandsaw. I'm going to do three cuts in here, and then we'll join those up. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum -ba -bum. Now, I'm going to have to cut some end grain in here, but that's all right. <laughs> we'll do that as we did yesterday. Uh, you are right, Bob? You happy there, or you want to go up to the house? Go on, then. Up you go. Okay, I'll finish with the drum sander, so I can put that back onto that. If I if I can un unplug it, there we go. I'll put that back onto the uh, bandsaw. And I'll put the light back in. We've still got a camera over there, so we can bring that around. How's that looking? Is it looking good? Oh, look, nearly there, nearly there. Um, how about that? Beautiful. All right, these are totally, these are totally random patterns that I'm cutting. So there is no rhyme or reason to them. The only thing I have discovered yesterday was if you're going to do patterns like I'm, I'm doing, you've really got to, I'll see if I can find one that I did right. Um, yeah, I think the first one I did right. If you're going to do it, when you come in, if you're going to come in this way, make sure you come in this way on the other one. So you mirror it and then you should do that on the next one. So it's sort of a vase shape there and then a waist shape, then a vase and a waist. And the reason I say that is when I came to put it together, Brian brought out a very good point. I should have been using a um, platen or some calls on either side that would have straightened it up. But when you have it like I suggested, it actually does lock into each other and it pressures each one in. Whereas if you have, say you have a vase top and then a waist bottom and it's different either side, when you push it, it tends to squeeze that middle one out so it comes out of alignment. But just a little thing, just a little thing, um, could see everyone using shellac, been using it for turning and French polishing lately. Yeah, shellac's good, I love it. We mixed this stuff up yesterday. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, I, I agree, Ray. So I, as a um, presenter, I have to be aware of that and act accordingly. So I, I had, had a couple of people say, how come the chat's gone and I had to investigate and, and that's why. So I've just got to keep on the back of it. So if we can just, well, let's just keep it going with woodwork. That's the best thing, isn't it? 
Ah, oh, my latest pill and pen arrived. That's all we need. Well, there you go. Power, I'm hoping I get a cheaper power bill. I've just put 6.6 .6 kilowatts on the roof of the house, and I'm hoping my power bill is going to go from $1,000 a quarter down to $400. I would be happy. Yeah, I think they're still trying to bring in self-reading too. I don't know how that's going to go. Anyway. Back on the woodwork. I'm going to put some of these on before I go deep. I must. Good day, George, if you're watching. I was going to catch up with George at the woodworking show. Um, he's the inventor and the maker of eye muffs, which, for those of you who don't know, you've got goggles and eye muffs in one. Check them out online. Eye muffs. I should, I should give him a plug. I mean, I should give him a ring. Um, now, okay, let's go over to there. Okay, so now where I've started there, I'm going to have to come in there. And where I've exited with a little kick, I've got to exit with a little kick there. That's what I reckon anyway. It doesn't have to mirror it any other way or any other place. As I will demonstrate. But it has to end the same way there, so I'm going to kick out there, like that. That'll do. That's all we need. Now we'll get some veneer. Whack that in there. Well, actually, I wonder... I just wonder if it might look nice if I did a little one there too. I might do that. I'm just going to do a little, little one here. rules. You just make the stuff up as you go. Yeah, that looks nice. I like that. Okay. There you go. So we'll have a, a line through there, a line through there, and then a half a line through there. Schmick! Oh. G'day, Dennis! All right. Now, got to do end grain on this again. I don't have any I might have. What do I have? No, I don't think I've got any Dara, Dara, Jara that wide. So what I'm going to have to do is join... Three bits, there you go. And that means we're going to have to get the guillotine. 
la guillotine out and whoops chop that up where is where did I put it last night everybody the guillotine I can't find it. I'll have to do something else. Ah! Oh. It's a trouble when you got so much stuff, you can lose it. I had it last night. What did I did with it? Yeah, it's not. Doesn't matter. We'll move on to something else. Well, that's. That's the most peculiar situation. Ah, here it is. I knew I'd put it somewhere safe. It's just I didn't remember. Okay. All right. So we go 45 mil or 50 mil strips. Time fly, all this stuff. I thought, oh, I'll be able to do this, be able to do that. And I'm looking at the clock and no. But I do want to get a start on the picture frame. And we'll see how we go. Okay. Um. This is something we came up with yesterday. It worked really well. Using the guillotine to cut veneer. It doesn't cut so well. It doesn't cut so well along, um, along the grain, but it cuts well across grain. Brilliant idea. Alrighty. I think I will use that for this. And some. Sticky tape. You want to get it as close as you can, but in this situation, let's face it, it's a chopping board. So don't get too thingy about it. Oh, that's going to take a knife. Says he, where's my knife? Where is? It's a good point. Where is my knife? I'll use this one. This one off too.
Now we've just got to glue those together. Pretty fragile, but you just bend it in, in half like that. Put a wee glue line down there. And the same on the other side. For those glues, to, glues, to, those strips to dry, and then we'll put it in the chopping board. As soon as I've done this, we'll have a look at starting to make a picture frame. I wish I learned about this years ago. Boy, I could have saved myself some trouble. Okay, so that's one. We got one, two, three and a bit. So that's two. And I think, what is that? That shortest bit, most likely would, I'll get away with one strip on that, so we'll just cut that. And that will be good. Okay. Leave that there in case I need it again in a tick. <clears throat> You don't have to worry about grain matching or direction or anything like that when you're doing this because you're only going to see the end bits and that's all we're interested in. Okay, you just fold it over like that. Uh, working with veneer, a lot of people get hung up on it. It's just the same as working with solid timber, except it's a bit thinner. But you treat it the same, your, your joints are the same, your glue ups are the same, your terminology is the same. Your swear words when you mess it up are the same. <laughs> Okay, last one. Yeah, look, Mike, I have, um, but not as thin as the, the question was. Uh, Mike's got the same bandsaw as I've got. And have I ever cut my own veneer on it? Yes, I have, but not the thickness that I use. I'm using here. I would cut maybe a, a two mil veneer on it. And for that, I use the resaw blade. It's funny, a lot of people say, oh, no, I'll make my own veneer 3 mil. Well, to me, 3 mil is not veneer. 3 mil is a solid piece of timber. But, yeah, it's a lovely machine. I must admit, I do like it.
<laughs> and in particular, the feature I like the most about it is the foot brake. I've got two other band saws that are in a resource shed and uh, they do not have a foot brake. And I really do like that foot brake um, because they will free spin just with the inertia of the flywheels for quite some time, whereas a foot brake eliminates that problem. Uh, that one will keep there. And where's me? Where's me paper? Okay, we'll just wait for that to dry. I'll just put some weights on there. And once they're dry, then we can put it into the chopping board. One more coat on this one, I'm thinking about it. I'm just going straight into the big pot. So I won't glue this one up today if I'm continue to do this. I'll do this through the day and then tomorrow if I've got enough finish on it we um, we can glue it together. This is de-waxed blonde shellac. And the brush I'm using is 100% squirrel hair, which I don't think you can buy anymore. Uh, one inch mop. Okie dokie. Ah. Yeah, you're still watching the picture frame. I haven't got around to it. I'm going to start doing it now. Grab some timber. A little bit. Oh. A bit of Spanish cedar. Over there. Okay. What size do we need? Clean that off yet. It's another thing that's got to get done. And there's my knife I was looking for. What 
there's a pencil in there, I haven't. Oh, there is a pencil. All right. We make an internal of 250. Internal of 250. Now I'm going to put glass in this, um, if I can find some glass, I know I've got some up in another shed. So I'll put a 10 mil rebate on either side, but the main thing is we need 250 internal. So once we work that out, then we can work out how long we have to make the frame. Um, okay. So we measure there, then we measure down 250. It's there, and then we put another 45 degrees in. And then we measure this bit, which is close enough to 400. So we go 4, 8, uh, the, okay, we need about a 1.6. We're laughing, that's a 1.7. Okay, we can do it. We can do it. You can actually save money or, or, or timber when you cut this. You can either cut it like this and then use that part there as a joint and use the waist side as a frame as well, as part of the frame. So your one mitre will give you two edges and that would greatly reduce the amount you'd need because it'll be 400 from there to there and then 400 from there to there. Let's just measure that just for fun. We'll have a look. Bearing in mind, I haven't taken into account your um, curve, but if we did it this way, so that means that then would have to go there. And then you'd measure 400 from here. To here and put in your cut and then 400 from there to there. Well I've never done that exercise before but there you go. Okay so if you were limited with your timber and you wanted to make this frame to go around here and it was 400 square all the way around, you can either cut it so all the, end, all the long grains will match up in the square, except for of course the last bit. That would take 1.4, uh, 1.6 meters. But if you do it this way, you actually save 200 mil. So there you go. If you've got a bit that's too short, maybe uh, you think, okay, well, if I did it this way, could I do this? And, you know, there's different ways of doing it. This particular one I'm going to cut um, all out of the same end grain. So I'm going to waste these middle pieces in the middle. But the reason I want to do it is big, this sapwood here can go on the inside of the frame and it will be all the way around. 
this crack here you can see I've got a big split happening there don't care because I'll have that as the inside back of the picture frame and all that will be taken out as a rebate to take the glass, the backing board and the embroidery. But I think what we might do is we might stylize it and make it look a bit schmick. So that's going to be the inside. So I'm going to mark this as the outside. And this is going to be the inside. So I'm just thinking what I'm better off doing first. All right, and we'll work a profile. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing this on the hop. Okay, so we'll have a 45 there. I, I'm dreading this because I said I was going to do it all by hand and I want to go over to the saw and dock it to length. And if I do that, someone's going to go, how are you going to do it by hand? All right, well, I'll do it by hand. There you go. Oh, I don't mind. Um, you know, some people have problems sawing a straight line. Here's the easy way of doing it. You get your square up against your timber, do a knife cut, like that, and then on the waist side, which is this side here, I don't want that bit, Get a chisel, preferably sharp, and then just run it up there at an angle. Angle doesn't matter, but it has to be on an angle. That chisel could do with a bit of a sharpen too, just quietly. Might have to sharpen them this afternoon. Okay, so now you've got a reference mark there. Then, Put it in there. there you go. Then you just pop it up against whatever it is you're going to use. I'll see if I can give you a good shot of me doing this. There you go. And we'll go there. And you just slide the saw in up against that fence like that. And then very slowly start. And as you get into it, you can go a bit deeper and deeper and deeper. Try not to go through to your bench. which is not desirable. I'm just going to put this paper underneath it. There you go. Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll test it. I'll test the theory. Yeah, that's a square cut. And it's also square that way. So I don't know. That might help someone with cutting timber later on. But the trick with it is it's practice. Everything I do, it's only because I've done it hundreds of times, in some cases thousands of times. That's what makes it look so easy. Um, now what do I want to do? Okay. So now I'm going to look at the profile of this and work out, where's that manky bits there? So this is going to be the outside and we'll just draw. The, this, this could change in reality as, as they, they, the, the watch me know. But you've got to have something to start with. So I'm thinking I want to have a mitre there. Then we'll have a land, then we might have 
this here and we might have a bead here and we'll have a V here. Um, we might go, no, let's have a look at that. Yeah, we might actually, that's what we'll do. Okay. So I don't know if you can see that. But that's the moulding I will attempt to make. And then we can take the picture frame out of that. That's the other thing. If you're doing cutting it the way I said, I can do this one moulding and cut it out of here and I'm not going to waste. Uh, I won't have to realign the moulding I'm putting in. If we did it the other way, <coughs> excuse me, where the internal is in here and then you're alternating each one. So that's going to be a long piece and a short piece and a long piece because you're using that same mitre for an edge. You can't do what I'm doing now. And I'm going to just put a profile or a moulding in this entire piece and then we can cut it up and go from there. So interesting to see if I can remember how to do it because I haven't done one of these for about two years, I don't think. Let me just find my mitre board, wherever that is. Oh, here we go. Oh. Here we go, go, go. Hiya! Bust me poof out there. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh, goodness. This <laughs> big, big heavy thing. Uh, this board is so I can do mouldings um, yeah this board so I can do mouldings with hand planes and it's set up so I can have on the mitre I can have it flat or I can have it flat this is a different flat I use for something else but through the process, we'll be using all of these different bench angles. I can tell you now we won't get the picture frame made today, but, so I'm sorry about that, but as I said, this is just what I do in a normal day's work, but we'll get the moulding started and we'll get into them first thing tomorrow as well. Okay, let's have a look. What have I got here? Okay, first of all, I've got to scribe the line for the inside for the inside angle. So I'm going to put that there, and and all this is guesstimate. Okay, that's what I want to start out with. But believe me, if I slip with a, a plane. I'll just change the design, it's all right. It doesn't even matter. Where are we? Um, da -da -da -da. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Ken. Makes me feel <laughs> makes me feel special, that does. My family's like that. Dad, who's dad? Oh, I'll tell you a true story. True story. Happened the other day. Um, one of my sons was in a discussion with his girlfriend, and Sue was talking to his girlfriend and said, Steve said such and such. Within about Five minutes, my son had rung up and he was not happy. What do you mean I said this? How do you do? And Sue goes, what? 
you told so-and-so that Steve said that, and I didn't say that. She said, what is your father's name? He's not Steve, he's dad. <laughs> so there you go, I'm dad, apparently. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, I was going to, I'll tell you a story about shortening your fingers. Over here, we'll be using this tomorrow. That's a picture frame is guillotine. And one day, I was using it, and I was very, very <laughs> conscious about what was happening on the job. So I had the job, and I was concentrating right here, right there where the job was coming. I wasn't concentrating on this side where my thumb happened to be underneath and I went like that and it got stuck and I thought, oh, what's stopping that? So I pushed down extra hard <laughs> and, dear, and cut the corner of my thumb off. And no, boys and girls, they don't grow back like your teeth. So there you go. And that wasn't even mechanised. That, that wasn't even plugged in. That was just all manpower, that one. Oh. Yeah, well, there you go, Dennis. I must, must be behind on the chat, am I? Mm. G'day, all. How are you, mate? From Connecticut. Welcome. Uh, what, what's that? Miders are corners using the reflection in the... So well, there you go. That's another way of looking at it. Mm. Um, I've missed all of that. I wish I was involved in this, but I'm getting busy. Uh, dear, oh dear. Steve Koff, self, I, I am. I've, <laughs> oh, thanks, Ray. <laughs> all right. Now, uh, I'll just better check my batteries to make sure that I'm... I'm not going to go flat on you. Hang on, let me have a look at that. Oh, that's down to one bar and then new ones in there. No, we should be right. Should be right for this stream. I'll put new batteries in tomorrow. Um, okay, so I've also got to allow two mil for the glass, three mil for the backboard, two mil for uh, push pins. Anyone adding up? That's two, four, seven. I think I'll allow 10 mil. So I've got to come down 10 mil, three eighths of an inch, depending how you want to look at it. Here. So I've got to make sure, okay. This is where the rebate is going to go. And if you actually look at that, I've nicely covered this, so that's going to go. So the rebate line's there, and that'll disappear. So that's, that's no hardship at all. Um, I think I'll have that coming down to there. Like it's, it's like anything with anything you do. It's marking out and setting out that seems to take the time. Whoops. I'll define these. Soon with the snipe bill, plain. This is a is that guillotine. No bet you're losing your fingers on the guillotine. I'll break my flipping neck if I trip over that one. These are snipe bills. They're especially plain. All the planes I'll be using, barring maybe a block plane, are all H&T Gordon. And these are snipe bills. If you can see how thin that blade is, 
there's a right and a left. So I'll give you a quick, quick demo. If I can, I've got any screws around here? Yeah, should have. Oh, look at that. Now, have I got a screwdriver gun? That'd be good too. Yes, look at that. Even put a charged battery in it yesterday. How good's that? Okay. So a snipe bill. That's a pity. It's a great pity. I oh, know it'd be right. Be right. Okay. So I'm gonna put a um, a screw in here to act as a stop. Okay. So now I can plane all the way down. I just want to define that mitre. So which way do I want to go? That way, there you go. So these fit just inside. I'll see if I can get the, look how fine the shavings are. There you go, that's, that's how fine the shavings are. You can barely see them. But what that is doing is opening up that line that I did with the marking gauge to give me a positive position when I start actually putting the profiles in. See if we can get you some sexy shots here. There you go. So I can go both ways, depending on what I want to do. See how that just goes nicely in, um, let's see if I can put a clamp on that in the marking gauge slot. To widen it out and allow me to do everything I have to do. Okay, so that's gonna be the start of the Mitre. Uh, now we've got a. I don't know what we'll have on that. We'll have a very slight round over on that, followed by a cove. If you can see that there, so I'll put the. <clears throat> I'm just going to break this bit off because it keeps on catching. And I'll do the same thing. down and 
If I want to, I can go the other way by using the other one. And come up the board. Except I haven't got it anchored up that way. Now you can see I've got two definite marks there. Now I've got a cove to go in, which is this one here. So we'll put another mark there, the marking gauge. So I want to do it this way, get the other one. I love doing um, marquetry, I think, is my favourite uh, discipline in woodwork. But I tell you what, making mouldings comes a pretty close second. Got another one the other side of there, which is going to be a. Uh, what do we put there? Make that a hollow, I think. Take enough of that. Look at that. Look, we we have see? more blood. Just got a cord on that splinter. And we got one there to go. I think we'll leave that. No, no, we'll go right to the edge of that. Okay, so I'm just talking to myself here. Last one. It doesn't really matter, does it? Okay, so that's the layout. Now to do that design, I think I'll do this one first. So in order to do that, I'll divide that. There's a guesstimate in the middle. And we'll go about there. And for this, I'm going to use a round plane. This is where it gets a bit confusing because you've got Round planes make hollows, and hollow planes, planes make rounds. It's a little bit out. Let me try. Right between the two of them. There you go. No, we'll come back here. It doesn't matter. We can mess around with it when we 
as we get something happening. So what I'm doing here is that cove I'm putting in, I've just divided it up the middle and I'm going to make an entry point for the round to go into. And for that, I'm going to use the snipe bills. Both sides. And that will give me a V. I'm, I'm hoping that will. Okay. Once you get a bit of a track going, it's fine. the other one which is going to round over the other half. And what I'm actually doing is starting a V that once I get a decent amount in there I'll go down with a, a rebate plane and we take the major portion out before we Introduce a round. Turn that around so I don't whack my knuckles on it. Oh, put that over there. Oh no. Oh, that's all right, Panda. It'll be there for a while. I'm, I'm just catch a, I get really focused when I have to do this. So I'm not ignoring you. I'm, I'm very well aware that I've got people watching, but please don't feel ignored. Good night, Panda. Catch you tomorrow, mate. Yeah, um, Ray's right there, Dennis. It's the marking gauge. That thing there, very, very thin. It creates a line. And then these very, very fine blades run into it. The brass track actually runs into it. Yes. Yeah, the reason I do... Uh, did both those uh, thingamajiggles there whoops, was because I'm now going to take, this is a, a rebate plane and I'm now going to put the rebate plane either side pokes out a little bit and I'm going to go this way and that way and widen this groove here so then I can introduce, introduce a round plane and we can get this profile happening there so let's go do that oh well, look you could use a stanley 45 i've got a 45 over there in the shop actually I, I could well use and it will do the job quite well uh with i mean that's just don't you just love that look at that it's springy one i'll put it up there in case you missed that one Lovely. Um, I use wax just on the edges of the plane and that helps to glide effortlessly along. Now I can go down that way. If I want I can turn the plane over this side and go this way on the way back so I'm not losing you can see the 
the thickness of it. You can see the thickness of it now. So I'm not losing any um, energy or momentum on getting a you know, good mileage out of the energy I'm putting in so I can go down that way and then come back this way. And I'm just doing that until I can get uh, deep enough to introduce the round, which I'm, I'm in there now. I could do it. Whoops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to give you a headache. All right, so now, oh, I'll start off with a 3 8 round, and that'll sit in that track nicely. Then when I get a little bit, I'll tilt the, you can't see, let me see if I can give it to you. And when I come down, I tilt the plane a little bit that way, and then a little bit the other way. Whoops, we don't want that happening. And then down the middle. And what I'm actually doing is widening that groove every time. I might even try a half inch and we'll see how we go. There you go. You know when you're cutting right, can you see I'm getting two Two coming off, that's because the blade is cutting on both sides and we haven't reached the bottom in the middle. As soon as I get one shaving, I know that I'm down to the depth of the sole. So even that, yeah, look at that. That's two shavings. That's one shaving because I'm just taking it off of one side. Oh dear. I'll come back the other way, but I haven't got it anchored. No, nah, so I won't bother. I'll keep on coming down this side. And yeah, look, I could do this with a router. But you'll tell it's done with a router. It won't have that wonderful handmade sort of feel to it or look to it. the bestest thing out. And I've got this mark here and this mark so I know how wide I have. Ooh! Choke throat. Going a bit of candle wax makes a heck of a lot of difference. You can tell by the sound. I can tell by the effort I'm putting into it.
getting close. And it, and it is a bit like watching paint dry. Come right on that line here. And pretty close to it down here. So now I've actually planed down to this line here that we drew originally. Got a little bit to go on this side, which I'll do. And then we can take it down to a little bit more depth. Where are we? Depth there, I haven't got much to go there. Then I think I'll do this one. That one I'll leave till last, and that one we'll do tomorrow. So I hope you're enjoying this one. I am. I, I love using these tools. Where are we up to? Oh. Um, yeah, if you don't have snipe bills, a good rebate plane is... Uh, I was using this before I got the snipes. This actually is a skew rebate, which means it cuts at an angle, it cuts nice and clean and nice and fast, and has a big throat. Not to be confused with a shoulder plane. This is a shoulder plane. It is parallel, and it has a very, very fine mouth. In fact, you can't even see the mouth. That's how fine that is. And you won't get the same results with one of these as you will with one of these. Um, what else could you use? I don't know. Let's have a look. You can always come and borrow mine, Alan. No, not borrow them. You can use them while you You can't take them away. The only trick is you have to sharpen them for me. <laughs> Oh, welcome, Dennis. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Mike, you, you do that and I'll ring you up, all right? Okay, I've got a couple more to go on this. I'm just looking at the... All right, this, now, and what happens with grain direction? As soon as you put a V in it, you have opposite grain direction. Going down this way, I'm planing downhill, which is what I want. But going down this way, I'm planing uphill. And if you don't know, I'll see if I can explain that a little bit better. Oh, my glue pot's just gone off. Hang on, let me just turn it back on again. There you go. All right, now the grain here, where are we? The grain on this side is, if you follow those grain lines, they're going down that. If you can, leave me pencil. There you go. If you see that grain, it's going down that way, if you follow the grain. So when I'm planing, I'm planing downhill. But if we go over here onto the other side, if you look at the grain, that's running uphill. So if I run down here, I'm planing downhill, and then I do exactly the same on this side. Same bit of timber, 
I'm actually running uphill. So once you start doing that, this has to go down on this side, and when you're planing on this side, you're planing up this way. So I'll do that. Now, because if not, what you end up is with um, tear out, which is not something that we want to do. And, and if you do that, it means you've got to put another screw on the other side to hold it in. Wait a minute. Oh dear. Okay, that's going to hold it. See, there's, honestly, there is no need for fancy whiz bang Zeiss vices or sexy hold downs or anything that is, um, you know, the, the shops are telling you you've got to have. Look at that. This is literally, this is old stud wall that I had that I um, made this thing up. I've had it for a few years now. And that's all I use, just a screw to hold it. Nothing. Nothing flash fancy at all. See, it's not choking and I'm getting a nice shaving because I'm going nicely. If I go this way, can you hear the difference? Actually, there. Oh, no. If you have a look, you have a look at that shaving. It's very coarse and it's very brittle. Whereas if I, you can see it there. If I go the other way with the grain, so I'm going downhill, you listen to the difference. See, it's a much higher pitch and it's a much, where are we? It's a much finer um, shaving. Could do with a bit of. Bit of wax on that, I think. I don't have the aid of gravity ejecting the shavings as well. So it is catching a bit. Plus I I'm fairly sure it's in. Need of a wee sharpen. And watching me sharpen these things is more boring than watching me use them, I tell you. Okay, now I'm down. I'm down to that line on the other side. There we go. I've now got a curve here and a curve here and a ridge in the middle. So what I've got to do, where are we? Did I knock that out? Okay. The situation I have now is you can actually see the light differential between the two. I've got a curve here and a curve here and a ridge in the middle. So I've got to get that ridge out. And the way I do it is I sort of kink the plane between the two and I'm skewing it down just to give me that and you just feel it with your fingers. Okay. And that is pretty good. 
What was the other one I said we'd do? Now I might leave that. Okay, we'll do we'll do this middle one here, which is just going to be a straight um, bead, and then I think I'll go, <laughs> go and have a rest. You can see that rebate plane on an angle. Okay. And I'll do the same coming back the other way. It's going to make, make sure it's going the right way. No, it's got to be this way as well, okay. You just got to read the grain as you go. Everything I say is generally pretty accurate, but there's always exceptions. And in this case, oh no, it's not an exception. I'm Doing it the same way. Okay, now I've got two ridges here. I can get hold. Let me put these away. I tell you what, you, you people are teaching me to put tools away. I should ring Terry up. Oh, I might ring him up tomorrow whilst we're live if I can, and he can have a talk about his planes. Would you like that? Okay, this is a 3 8 hollow. You can tell it's a hollow because it's got that hollow bit. And it should fit pretty closely into those grooves that I've done. And I'll come back the other way. We'll see if it makes a difference. There we go. Nice sound, isn't it? All right. Now we'll try and get the corners happening. Okay. I think I just ripped a bit out there. Oh, I did too. That's all right. And if you do, for example, I went astray right there, you can see that, that's okay because that's going to disappear anyway, it's just I wasn't concentrating on what I was doing, but we can clean it up. How do you flatten the face of a number four? Um, by that, I, I'm guessing you mean the, the sole. Is that right, Jacob? I would get a piece of glass and depending how bad it is, uh, maybe start at 80 grit, wet and dry. Put, I personally would put kerosene down. Um, some people don't like using kerosene, so look, water will do. Just be mindful that it will make put a little bit of rust on the sole of your plane, but you can clean it off. And then in circular motions, I'll go one, two, three, one, two, three, and then a figure of eight clockwise, and then a figure of eight anti-clockwise, and then change hands and do it again. And you keep doing that until you've got an even scratch pattern all over the base of the plane, and then change from 80 grit to 100 grit, to 120 to 180 to 240 to 400 and you will end up with oh, planes and this was done years ago but planes as flat as that and this that was done nearly 25 years ago I think so that's how I would do it there are other ones around but I'd get a piece of shop shop front glass or cabinet glass about 10 mil 
and just put it down. And what I found is we're by using kerosene and I guess any other liquid would do, once it's down, it acts, it's the same as high glue and veneer and atmospheric pressure. It will create a suction between the sandpaper and the glass and the, sand, the uh, wet and dry just stays there and you just do this and then you peel it off. But that's the way I flatten mine. I wouldn't advise flattening it on a linisher, especially a high speed one, because if you don't hold it dead flat, it's going to make it whatever you're holding it at. So, yeah, there you go. How to square up the face of a board with a number four? Um, oh, how to square up a face of a board with a number four? I tell you what, Jacob, if you're on tomorrow, I'll do that live. You ask me tomorrow and I'll do it live for you. It's just I'm a bit uh, tired at the moment. So I'll just finish this bit. But ask me tomorrow and we'll do it. I don't know if I can do it with a number four because I don't use number fours as a rule. But I'll see. If not, I can definitely do it with um, you know, one other plane. But I'll see. Oh, hang on. No, I've got a number four over there. I'll uh, bring that out. That was the first plane ever bought, wasn't it? Okay, now you can see that bead actually starting. No, you can't because you're not looking. There you go. Now you can see this bead here starting to be formed by the blade. There's, yeah, there's several schools of thought. I used to always be of the opinion Especially using a 45, that, who ever mentioned a 45 before, I would start up one end and then work my way along like I'm doing now. And that is a very, um, what do you call it? Um, <laughs> I'm lost for words. Very logical way of doing it. And also a, um, you know, a good way of doing it. It's just, if I'm using really nice moulding planes like I am at the moment, I don't find there's any real benefit in it. Unless it's a particularly cranky bit of timber. Legitimate, that's the word I was looking at. Yeah, starting from one end and working your way up is a very legitimate way of doing it. And if you're unsure and just starting out, it possibly might be the best way because you're not going to get into too much trouble. I'm not saying I don't get into trouble with it, but I do know how to get out of it. So if you're just starting, maybe that's a good, good thing. Definitely with a 45, I would start at one end and work my way up. But with these, I don't see the real need. Okay, one more final pass, clearing pass. That's it. So we're not down to the depth that I drew. But that's okay, we can get to them later on. The main thing is to get the initial shaping done, I guess. And remember, candle wax is your friend. Okay, I'm just taking a very, very light pass there. You can hear it going hit and miss. Basically, all I'm doing is just picking up any bad bits that are left behind. Um, I might, yeah, I don't, I don't know, I'll leave that for the moment, I won't rush into that. This one here, 
We might just do this bit here too. Why not? I mean, if you don't mind. Oh. I'm going to put an angle in here. I'm going to put an angle in here, which I'll just do with this plane, if I'm going the right way. We, we might even be super tricky. I might even. Let, I might even put another bead in there. The um, things you can do are just countless or endless. Because as you work, you think, oh, that'll look nice. Oh, I think I'll put that in there. Or, gee, what would that look like with that? Than the start and the finish here. I don't care what the measurement is, I just want them to be the same. Okay, it's just a whisker thinner down there. If you ever want to clear, clean these up, what you do is get your shavings that you've made. I haven't made too many here, but if you've been doing a lot, and then rub them over the work you've done, and you have a look how well this shines up. I'll do it down this end too. And look at the finish on that. No sandpaper. Nothing. Just the shavings that you've made. You want to get into recycling, that's the thing to do. So there you go. We're getting there. But I, I'm, I'm past there, I think. Oh, let me just have a... Oh. Madam. Yeah, are you right, Brian? Oh, I really am on there, mate. See you, Tango. No dramas. All right, so what do we do today? We started doing a picture frame. We'll finish that tomorrow. Um, I'll glue up that uh, jarrah into that chopping board after I've had a nap. So we can then put that through the drum sander and uh, start squaring that off. The box, I'll keep shellacking that and we hopefully we'll be in a position to glue that together tomorrow. The iron filings, we'll give that a bit of a stir. Just have a look at that stick again. All right, that was just with a day. That's how effective it is. So if we, where is it? There you go. You can still see it's got some golden fleck in it. But I only stirred that. I didn't leave it in the soak and it wasn't under pressure. Um, I've got veneer to put on those hearts, which I might do some of that tonight. And I wanted to get in and do some more work on these boxes. I'll clean that other box up. But we've got heaps to do and still heaps to 
finish, and then when that's finished, I've still got more and more stuff to do. So there you go. I look forward to having your company in the workshop tomorrow. Thank you for everyone that's joined in. And this is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying thank you for spending the best part of the day with me as I work. I really appreciate it. Thanks for everyone in the chat room. Everyone's well behaved. We've got a good group there. Of <coughs> oh, that's it. It's all right. I had a mask on. Um, that are supporting each other and helping each other. And Hey, let's just let woodwork take over and we can start making stuff and focusing on good outcomes. All right, this is Steve pulling the shed door down saying, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe, be kind to your lab, be kind to each other, look after yourself, and I look forward to having your company in the workshop tomorrow where we continue doing what we're doing. Until then, goodbye. Thank you, everyone, for your kind support, your good words of encouragement, your comments, and just for being there. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.